What's going on, jiggly asses? Jay Hayes here. <clears throat> Love that. You find that popcorn kernel that was stuck in between your gums and your teeth last night. You just spit it up now. Hey! What's up, everybody? Jay Hayes here. So today I'm going to be doing a review on a device that a lot of reviewers are saying are fucking fantastic. Okay. I don't know if there's, well, okay, this may be a little rough in me saying this, but I don't know if there's a lot of people that actually utilize as much as sub ohm tanks as I do. And I'm not saying that no reviewers use them. I just know that every single night when you watch me, that's literally all that I use. And I'm talking about not just one variation, a multiple set different types of sub ohm tanks. So I kind of know this field, but now Hellvape is fucking back. And uh, very, 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 very small writing on the back of the box. And they created this innovative sub ohm tank, which essentially ejects the coil. Because there's nothing like going to put your juice in and then the coil spring up and hit your fucking lip and now you got a herpes sore on it because the sub ohm tank wanted to eject whatever it is. And I do want to point this out. Apparently people are really pumped up about this. And that's coming from people that are bitching about sub ohm tanks and all the one devices, but yet they want the sub ohm tank that has an ejectable coil. How fucking lazy are we going to become where you can't even unscrew the bottom of a tank to remove a coil when you would do the same thing in an RTA and an RDA. Now you have an option for the coil to fly out of the top. I feel like that's more of a game than that is for serious. But that's what we're looking at. And the name of this is called the launcher because the coil launches in the air. And guess what? Wanna bet? Proprietary coils? Let's call it. Bitch is proprietary, which means, and anybody that vapes knows this, after September 9th in the United States or September 5th, Unless they have the PMTA, you're going to have to buy your coils from overseas. And I bet you, even if you bought this now, you're not going to find many sites that are going to stock it in store in the United States because these, pro well, maybe with this one it's different because it's so innovative. Everybody's got to get this. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Like making, I don't want to sit here and just bash it, but even though when I go into these reviews, I go into it hard-headed, listen, here's the deal. You better impress the shit out of me because off the jump, you get a zero. Like that you have to build yourself up to that. Instead of working on your way to 10, like 10 and down, okay, I'm going to take a point off of this, like I used to do. Now, it doesn't even work that way. Once I open the box, if I can get it open, that's a one. Okay, there's an actual tank inside, that's a two. All right, the tank is broken. Now we're back down to a 1.5 because I only got the top section now. I need the actual glass. That's how we're going to do it from now on. I should almost put a little ticker in the corner, but I don't want to bite Vic style. So without further ado, what we're going to be looking at is called the... Get ready for this. The name of the company is Rice. But it, they, they, they spell it with a... I'm sorry, I said that wrong. It's why rice? Like, why would you eat rice? Instead of would you, just why rice? But you put your name of the company on the back, Hellvape. Just say Hellvape. Unless, of course, this is a subsidiary company. That's probably what it is. Let me guess. Why Rice is a reviewer. So without further ado, flip it. Oh, and just a heads up. Whenever you hear this, and you're going to... That's the tanks and the bracelet that's attached to the camera. That's not things breaking in the box. All right, guys, what you're looking at is the a launcher, a little cockeyed L there. Really nice. I, I think that they actually ran out of space, so they just kind of squished it in there. When in reality, you could just have straightened it out. I get it. It's supposed to be like a rocket taking off. Okay, and then there's the sub ohm tank. Looks a little beat up on the edges, a little ruffled feathers, and nothing too big. It says, you see what I'm saying about the Y rice? Y rice. Okay, on the side of the box, some of their social media. On the other side, you're going to get a scratch and sniff. This is going to taste and smell just like that. The back of the earlobes on a hot summer night launcher tank color is stainless steel standard and then i guess that's a batch number on the back of the box go ahead and give that a freeze frame for you something to read 26 and a half millimeter what a weird size especially considering most mods will not compensate anything
higher than a 24. Again, you'll see some that 25s will work. 26s is really, really being extremely limited. And everything that's included inside of the box, but let's just go ahead and open this up because I want to see what everybody's so pumped up about. It's the same shit that happened with the Kylan M. Is everybody was so excited? I get mine rusted ass cables. So you can see that there's going to be no jump cuts here because someone's going to say that I'm going to make this coil rust or make the launcher malfunction. Very, very hard packaging. And then. Of course, there is the sub ohm tank. Those are really, really cool colors. Now, I, I know it's just, I like how they put the coils in there, though. I will give them that. That is, okay, and that's a cool color. I guess that's red. Yep, those are, the inside of that looks like a really awkward color. Okay, we'll take that out in a second. Take this other one out. And then you get a spare bubble glass. And then, of course, the sub ohm tank. Anything else on the bottom? Yep. And then on the bottom of the box, you're going to get some extra O-rings. And then, in fact, a user manual, which is very, very viscous. Let's figure You know what? No, I'm not going to read a fucking manual, even though people want me to do it. If I can't figure it out just by taking this apart, then we got a problem. Okay, so before we look at the actual tank... I just probably rolled that around a little bit. You get a red version and a blue version. I'm just going to pop those out of here. I really do like the outside of this, though. I do. I think that is really friggin' cool. Okay, so the coils, 100% proprietary. The blue version is going to be 0.21, and then it says W802. And then the red one is 0.15. W801. Sub ohm tank, obviously airflow on the bottom, very easily adjustable. On the bottom it says Y Rice Launcher. And then on the top, drip tip configuration appears to be a 810, but it does have a little bit of a lip. So that means that most drip tips, while you would think would work perfectly on there, are not necessarily the case because this right here does not have an O ring and it doesn't, well, it does fit, but it just doesn't work. And then there we go. So we're just going to turn this, yeah? Let's figure this out. Turn. Yep. Okay. And we have a rubber grommet that should probably have stayed inside of this little jammy. Yeah, because that was like that. So I was just stuck to it. Nothing crazy there. That is a little sharp, though. I will say that. And then to fill it up, you got those ports. So... Let's put this in here. Push down. All right. Okay. That's all right. And then. Oh, why did you make it sound like it would have been cool? Like what? So let's take a look at the inside there. When you push this down, I think that opens up the chamber. Yep. So it's essentially what the Tigon did, but in reverse. And you say launcher like it's going to fucking launch it. It does See, well, I was done when I opened it up. You saw it. I thought that there was a call in there. I would have pushed this together and would have sprung out. Now that would have been fucking cool. Like if this was in there, right? Okay, fine. Like all sub ohm tanks, they have a coil in there. When you go to take this off, it's just still in there. And then you just kind of, and then it, boop. You understand what I'm saying? So it would go boop. Wait, hold on. Wait, hold on. I would I would push this and it would go boop like that. Like squeeze? No? You don't get that? That would have been cool. It's not a fucking launcher. Can you imagine if our defense system relied on this? <laughs> Guys, we're gonna launch missiles to Cuba. We're gonna do it right now in five four three two one and launch we just won the war just like that what what if i just go like hold on Let, let's see let's see if i could get this to launch nope hold on wait wait nope not quick enough hold on I'm putting holes in it. Try one more time. 
So that's all the way down. And... Oh, you saw it? Let me do it in slow motion. Comes up about right here. Okay. So, okay. I, I This is very, very rough. I'm assuming the higher one is designed for higher nicotines. I get it. Someone's going to be like, Jay, that's for salt, Nick. How did I know that? Because Bree told me. Whatever. That, that means absolutely fucking nothing to me. We're going to use the point three version. But before we do that, let's see if we can take the rest of this apart. There we go. All right. So let me tell you something. Okay, that's that's cool. So let, let's let's discuss. I'm not going to be able to operate that apparatus. So what happens here is, let me zoom in a little bit, and you're going to see what I'm saying. So that obviously that fingerprint is for me, but what happens is the coil goes in. You see the screwdriver, and then that kind of opens it up. It's literally what they do with the Tigon, but uh, of course that is over. I, I mean, a lot of Sublime tanks have some type of activation system, but it, look, is it a gimmick? Yep. Does it do what it says it does? Yeah. Well, no. It doesn't exactly launch, to be honest with you. But again, what I don't like about this is the proprietariness. You could have done the same fucking thing. You guys did the Hell Vape. Um, you've done a couple sub on tanks. Talk about Heathen. You guys could have named this the, the, the Heathen Launcher. And then it would launch RTA calls. You know, again, you could have done this with Baby Beast calls, and that would have been fine. But instead, you chose, well, any company, I guess, could really do it. And that's it. So we're just going to put that guy in there, screw this down, and that opens it up. Hopefully they taste good. And, of course, we're going to use my cream soda. Everybody always asks what this cream soda is. You just Google right side up, and then you will find it. So we're just going to put this in here just like this. We'll let that sit for about five minutes. So you see what happens now, right? Instead of a quick access, we have to put this back on and screw this back down. Okay, so there's there's a couple problems with this. Let me tell you the first one. First one is, yeah, so when you have your drip tip in here, you can take that whole apparatus off, that whole top section, but you have to manage to get your bottle in here without hitting this top piece or the drip tip, managing to fill it up. So that, that's a bit of a pain in the ass. And that's kind of it. I mean, you unscrew this, you fill it up. Don't unscrew this, because this is going to, well, watch. Hopefully that that doesn't leak juice in there. It shouldn't. Oh, and there you go. I see some juice, but it's no big deal. And we push down and screw. So it, it, I could tell you what you could do to make this better, or you could do it all in one operation. But once again, that is the Y-Rice Launcher. That does not launch anything. Can you see that? Just to deal with that. What is that spacing for? You see it? It doesn't even... Okay. We're just... Let's just bring this back on top. Back on top with the launcher sitting on top of the Argus GT. And as you can see, we do have a little bit of residual overhang. That's because of the size of the tank. Why would they go 26 and a half? If they went that large to compensate for the little chamber that essentially launches the coil in the air, uh, what? So you made it wider to compensate for the tubing, which would then in turn not necessarily launch the coil. It does release the pressure off the coil, so it closes, but it doesn't launch it. Like, I get it. It doesn't have quite the same ringtone as just release. Release would have worked a whole lot better than Launcher. I hope to God this has good flavor. All right, so this is picking up at a .16. Let's do it. It's been sitting for about 15 minutes. Let's see how it vapes. I thought that that would have a whole lot more airflow than that. You know what's crazy is I'm, uh, there's that cream soda. So I'm used to sub ohm tanks having a lot more airflow than what this does. Again, it, I'm not saying that it's restrictive. It's just more restrictive than something like the Argus, the PNP pod coil tank, or the Cerberus. A lot of sub ohm coils have more. Is that, uh, that's, you know why? It's not open all the way. Duh. There we go. There's that airflow. A lot of vapor production. Ooh, does that make my belly look big? Oh my goodness, look at that angle. 
Holy shit, do I look like a fucking beach ball. Maybe if I want more straight. Now it looks like it's, I got the muffin top. There we go, that's a little bit better. Here we go. You ever see those people? You've seen them, right? You've seen this type? Okay, so let's talk about it. Good flavor, not bad. I don't want to say it's a gimmick, because it is the first sub-ohm tank that I know that releases the coil through the top section. Okay, you could use the argument that it makes it more simple. Not necessarily, because what are you doing? To fill it up, you have to unscrew the top cap. To take the coil out, you could essentially leave the top cap on. So it does, okay, it is one less step, because if it didn't have that, you would still have to unscrew it, which would equate to just unscrewing the top, so that's one. The coil pops out, versus on the bottom, you would have to unscrew the bottom section again to remove the coil. So you take something like the PMP, which I really would not consider a traditional sub ohm tank because it's magnetic, and I do use the shit out of that, but that is, I wouldn't even consider that a step. You just pull it off and put the coil in. This is easier there, but does it make it a better sub ohm tank? No. Listen, guys, I'm not going to bullshit you. Hell Vape, as, as much as they may portray themselves as a vastly large company that creates all this shit, think about it. The proprietary coil is what scares me the most with the, with the PMP, and I hate keep using that, but it is a tank that I use religiously. I would say it's much easier to get those coils than something like this. This is not... You're not going to find these coils a year from now on the market. Now, hell, they may say they will. Okay, well, we'll just see. That's not saying that they won't make enough right now for it to last a year, but I I honestly cannot recommend you to buy a tank like this that has such proprietary coils. And that's with anything. That's with uh, the, 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 the TFV series and the TF series. They make new coils for everything, but the Baby Beast, as much as you may hate it, there's a lot of other companies that make coils that are compatible with the Baby Beast. Or, and that's why it's such a big deal when I do a review on a pod-based system or a sub ohm tank, and it uses coils from its predecessor. That's a big thing. Like, that's huge. This is a brand new coil on a brand new sub ohm tank that's 26 and a half millimeters in diameter. It, do, it doesn't check any box. What is the box? Okay, it's got a cool fucking thing that it pops the coil out of the top. Great. Is the hype really there? No. How it should work is, I'm going to just go ahead and plug in, this is the video of Bree's rendition of how to do this properly where it pops out. Now, pay attention, because here it comes. And that's how it should be done, minus the dental floss. But you get the idea. If I had to rate this device on a 0 to 10, it's not a piece of shit. This, the diameter fucks us all up. And then the proprietary coil is a 3. Again, the flavor is good. It is. Vapor production, fantastic. See, this is where an argument, Jay, what's it taste like? What's the what's the airflow like? That's an argument for a sub ohm tank. It's not for an RTA or an RDA. Well, I guess the airflow is not so much a flavor because that depends on you. Look, three. I don't want to say it's a piece of shit, three. It's just that's... If you were to rate... Rate? Rage? Rate. If you were to rate on a zero to ten, ten being absolutely by it, zero, don't even think about it, I'm going to put this in a two to the three block. And I've kept it real. Have you?